Empowered. I'm your host, Jessica Flynn of thejessicaflynn.com. Our show is on a mission to unleash local wisdom for widespread impact. We're committed to inspiring positive change and empowerment in our corner of the world and beyond. Joining us today, we have a team member from Georgian College's Innovation Research and Entrepreneurship Department. Adam is a self-proclaimed digital wizard, AKA Community Impact Lab Coordinator for the Research Innovation and Entrepreneurship Department at Georgian College. Adam is a reformed graphic designer of 20 years turned social innovator whose personal creative pursuits dive deep into the world of sculpture and painting. Adam leads the center's culture of prototyping where his role supports students, staff, faculty, and community members with bringing their innovations into both real and virtual worlds. So without further ado, please welcome Adam Dejeuner. Hello. Hello. Thank you for Hi, coming. Hi, Jessica. Yes, thanks for having me on. I was very excited to be here when you reached out. Yeah, I was really excited to, to come and yeah, share some information with you guys. And so. we're thrilled that you said yes. You journeyed from Aurelia campus. Yes, from the giant, the long travels all the way from the teeming metropolis of Aurelia, my, right? my hometown, <laughs> to Collingwood. Yes, I found a nice local uh, coffee shop to hang out with and get a little bit of work done before the show. So Beautiful. Yeah. Well, thanks for making the journey. Of course. Um, the first question is, how does an artist, a sculptor, a painter, find himself now a, a staff member at Georgian College? Absolutely. So I can give you a little bit uh, the, the high level uh, um, view of my adventure and my journey into the Georgian ecosystem. I I uh, went to, um, this is going to date myself many moons ago, <laughs> I, I went to, I did an Art Fundamentals one year course at, at Georgian, so uh, I was a, a Georgian alumni, so like an Art Fundamentals course oh, nice. to figure out what aspect of art and design that I wanted to pursue uh, for a living. I ended up at Seneca at York University for a three year graphic design program. After completing that, very excited to learn about the world of graphic design and turning creativity into a, you know, an actual way of uh, uh, generating money for my, my career and for my life. Uh, and then I, I traveled, ended up back in my hometown of Aurelia, Ontario, and started my own graphic design business way back in 2008. Wow. Um, working with local businesses, helping with branding, graphic design, printing, um, and all that other digital wizardry stuff. Um, so always been in a, a creative space that way. Um, and through having that, that local business, um, connected with Georgian College, uh, having a uh, offering a, a place, a co-op position for their graphic design students as well. So I was able to bring in Georgian students into my studio and have them work with me, as well as connect with Georgian as a um, as a printer and a designer for some other projects. So I had a little bit of a, uh, an had a foot in the door exactly already. an adjacent yeah. as a supplier and a designer for that. And through those adventures, met some awesome people in different departments at Georgian. And as I wound down my business, when I started up my uh, my family uh, with my wife and I, and during the pandemic, it was a great time to kind of transition careers a little bit. I've been doing design for a long time, so I was just looking for something new and exciting and a, an opportunity arose and I applied and that was five or six years ago now. So Beautiful. Yeah. What a great story. It's so full circle. But I'm sure they get so excited when past students join the faculty. Yeah, it was a, a roundabout way. I was in a direct alumni that got hired. It was like this big roundabout way. And then uh, again, being in Aurelia, uh, really is my home campus, which is great. So I don't have a far commute. I can actually walk to work if I'm feeling oh, uh, vigorous. I, yeah. you know, it takes about 40 minutes to walk to work. So it's a lovely, uh, I love that small campus. I also love going down to Berry campus and stuff like that as well. So yeah, so yeah, roundabout way to go from artist and designer into the Georgian, uh, yeah, working with an amazing team and group at, at Georgian there. And I'm just getting to know some of your amazing team and that's how we met. So can you help um, our viewers understand a little bit about the structure? So there's the um, innovation, or is it research, innovation and entrepreneurship department? So many acronyms, so R-I-E, yeah, <laughs> R -I -E. yeah, yeah. Okay. and I'll do my best too because I'm still trying to figure it out. Okay, and then within that there is the research and innovation. Yeah. Social innovation you got it. and then entrepreneurship. You got it. Yeah. And you are social innovation. Social innovation. And then to make it even more complicated, so we previously were the Center for Change Making and Social Innovation. Okay. So we uh, were championing this the idea of change making, which I'm sure we'll get to eventually, yeah, but we, we were sure. the Department of uh, yeah, Change Making and Social Innovation. We evolved uh, as new things came up for uh, the change making to end up on its own. And then so we we're just uh, newly formed, like super fresh, not even a year under our belt, uh, with a new director, Nicole Norris, uh, the Department of Social Innovation. So 
And then, then yes, my official job within that is the Community Impact Lab Coordinator for the Department of Social Innovation. Fab. Way, okay. Way too big for a name tag. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. That's you need I, like a T-shirt that wraps around exactly. the back. Exactly. There's lanyards with them on it. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. That's. If, it all yeah. sounds very <laughs> not only exciting but really relevant. Uh, and so we're going to dive into uh, a little bit about what students are actually studying in your department. Very cool. Before we do that, can you give us your definition of social innovation? Absolutely. And this is something I think that constantly is evolving and changing as I learn more myself being new in this space. Um, I think at, at its core fundamental components, social meaning like people and interactions and innovating meaning new ways of exploring and looking at things. So how are people uh, enter, uh, sorry, engaging with and interacting with um, different information and how are they passing through processes and systems. So it's that's the, the people part of innovation and creation. Right. Yeah. And so you are obviously a very social person, um, but also a little bit like the science behind social and, and how do we make impact um, from a people side of things? Yeah. Is that some of the work? Yeah, exactly. The psychology behind it, some of, exactly, and some of those pieces as well. So, okay. Yeah. Um, when I, I had the opportunity to go on a tour of the Aurelia campus and your labs, um, and there's so much information, and it really is exciting and inspiring to be in that physical space. Um, and I know a, um, that your program and department is connected with the UN sustainability goals. Uh, could you give us a very high level, what are those SDGs? Yes. What does it stand for? More acronyms. More acronyms, UN yeah. SDG. So this is something, again, within my, my new adventure within, the, within Georgia and learning about the SDG. So Georgians really proud to have uh, re-signed the SDG Accord, which means that they're committing uh, to contribute positively towards these, these goals and what the SDG goals are, these 17 goals that were set out by the United Nations for us as a planet, just species on this 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 space rock that we call earth uh, that we're all just for us to survive regardless of anything how can we just these are the things that we all need to work towards and contribute towards uh, that will just help us sustain uh, life on the planet and that's like clean drinking water education climate action all of these kind of high level things that we aren't necessarily going to solve a specific one. We're not going to come up with a solution for, say, zero hunger. But all we, we can all positively contribute to much larger conversations. And all these little pieces can help make movements happen and shift things in a more positive way. So always contributing positively to these goals. And the, they're set out to be accomplished by 2030, just you know, to have something to work towards. Very mm -hmm. lofty. Yeah. Uh, and that's rapidly approaching. So it's kind of scary. But it's also, if you think about and look reflect upon when those goals were set and what has actually been the work that has been done uh, in that amount of time, very amazing stuff. So yeah, it acts as a bit of a guiding light uh, um, and a driving force behind some of uh, the programming that we run. Beautiful. And rather than reinventing the wheel, there's been this work and research done. So I th what I love about the SDGs is it gives us kind of a common ground, like, okay, and there are 17 of them. So here are some, we've got a lot of issues to deal with. Here are 17 that we can focus on as a global community Absolutely. Um, and give us that kind of springboard as and a it, reference. Yeah, and it gives everyone an opportunity to identify with one. So you, they, they may not all resonate with you. I cannot name off all 17 of them. Yeah. I'm sure, nor can you. <laughs> yeah. But if you look, if anybody who's never even seen or heard of them, they could read over the 17 and uh, probably identify with a couple of them that resonate with them personally mm -hmm. or within their, their career or their family. Our youth empowerment program focuses on SDG 4, which is quality education, there you go. Uh, and 10, which is reduced inequality. So just a couple other examples. But it really, I mean, it's a great menu yep. when you're choosing not only to learn about a challenge, but also then to start thinking maybe what your organization can do what you're doing already and then where you maybe want to go or improve in certain areas or things you're doing great, maybe those can translate or uh, mirror into some other sections as well. So, right. Yeah. So it sounds like, okay, still understanding uh, this department and, and this lab, it sounds like what you do could really connect with all sorts of programs that students would be studying at Georgia. Absolutely. So that's the, the cool part about the SDGs is they are this like universal menu that almost anything can plug into to, regardless of the discipline that you're taking uh, within the college or anything really um, and that's the, the the great part about it so is that like um, if where you're coming from we can take a look at which ones resonate or plug in or that 
are, um, will have the learning outcomes that you're looking for. Uh, so you could uh, just pick those ones that relate to that. And then you can pursue, yeah, building out solutions and positive uh, movement towards that based on where you're coming from within the So your the department supports not only students who are taking courses within the department, but the college as a whole? Absolutely. So anybody okay. can plug into, uh, plug into us. Um, which is really cool and keeps things very versatile that way. Um, but yeah, uh, so not only are we presenting what we think are, are, um, are popular or ones that are a hot button at the time, say when we're building programming or running through a semester of students that are working on different design briefs and projects related to specific SDGs that we've identified as uh, popular, uh, but also they can be any of those other ones depending, you know, if you're coming from a vet tech program or engineering or something like that, what uh, is related to that um, might be a, a entirely different. So we can yeah, adapt and, and build based on that. Fabulous. Fantastic. Um, and before we go to break, we're going to lightly introduce a really cool program, which is what uh, got us connected, which is the Change the Now program. Uh, so that falls under your department. It does, yeah. And that is one of those programs that's deployed college-wide. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So uh, same thing. Anybody can plug in to change the now at, at a super high level. Uh, change the now or hashtag CTN is an experiential learning offering that comes out of the college, uh, sometimes referred to as a, a school within a school. Um, but it acts as a co-op and field placement alternative, as well as a way for community partners, uh, educators, faculty, and students to connect um, with the SDGs, as well as some other really cool learning resources um, and frameworks that kind of help create positive change. And did Georgian create this program, or there's a relationship with, I think, uh, international programs? Yeah, so we uh, work with international as well. So uh, Georgian is a, uh, an Ashoka Changemaker campus, which is a designation that we're really proud of. We just recently re-signed the designation, which means that uh, campus-wide, uh, we're committing to creating um, positive change and helping people identify themselves as change makers and all the cool stuff that we have that goes along with that. So you get some support from them, but now it's kind of your responsibility to spread that exactly. programming. Yeah, we build our own base programming, but also allow other people to come in and build with them uh, to, to help achieve what they're after as well and trying to make sure everybody yeah, is, is just creating that positive shift. And we know, you know, we have a picture of what college students, um, kind of the age and what they're working on, but what I love about this program is that there's a vision that is K to college. So... Um, a region of change makers, yes. From yeah. kindergarten all the way up to post-secondary level. So so when we come back from the break, we're going to dive into some more details of this hashtag CTN Change the Now program at Georgian College uh, with their community impact lab, lab coordinator. coordinator, Adam. So we'll see you soon here on Empowered with Jessica Flynn. Welcome back to Empowered with Jessica Flynn. Joining us today, we have Adam Dajne from Georgian College, and we're so thrilled to be talking about their Change the Now co-op program within their social innovation department. So thank you again for joining us and for taking us on a whirlwind <laughs> conversational tour of what's going on um, in, you know what, it's so it's, 
you are working out of the Aurelia campus, but is this programming happening at all Georgian campuses? Absolutely. So part of my role, um, again, with that long job title is it's the Community Impact Lab Network Coordinator. So each one of Georgian's campuses, we're working on creating a Community Impact Lab space, which is a physical lab space or a room where this type of work related to the UN SDGs that we talked about previously, mm -hmm. as well as this Change the Now programming, some of this other stuff can happen. So each one of the campuses has one of these physical spaces that can be connected into, um, but as well as like this programming of, uh, of any like change making and the UN SDGs, as well as Change the Now is available campus wide and anybody can tap into it. Very cool. And so the campus that I was able to take a tour of um, was in Aurelia. And when you say labs, it looked like a, it looked like a science lab slash garage, like the fanciest garage you've ever seen. There you go. Okay, cool. I'll take it. <laughs> a garage. So I've been in some cool garages. Yeah, yeah. Some cool <laughs> garages. So the the lab part, like these are students really working on um, real life projects. Can you explain a little bit how they get connected with? an SGG with a community partner, how it all comes together. Absolutely. Primarily the programming uh, and the people, types of people working within the lab spaces are students uh, participating in a field placement or a co-op. Um, so it's like Change the Now can be a, a field placement or a co-op alternative. Uh, so when they come in, they would start for a semester with us and they are given a design brief at the beginning. Um, so I always say practice safe design, use a concept. Uh, so <laughs> they are given this design brief or concept for what they will be working towards and trying to solve and contribute to over the course of the semester. The design brief is always tied to one or two SDGs. So that brings those SDGs. And then we talk about tools and resources and frameworks that the students work through that, that design brief. They're going to run that idea, that problem statement, through a bunch of different cool steps and uh, worksheets and frameworks and canvases um, in these physical spaces. So um, that's what we do in those. So the, and the, the cool thing about those lab spaces is you can physically do that work when you're in there with the, with the whiteboard. We kill, we kill a lot of sticky notes. We use yeah. a lot of whiteboards. <laughs> Uh, but the, all that same work and those tools and canvases and worksheets um, that are available in that physical space can also be leveraged and used in a virtual space as well. That's right, and we saw that. So if the students had a screen or a whiteboard that looked like this and they had physical notes on it, that screen can then be accessible to them off campus. Exactly. So right. that if they're working on a Teams canvas, they're meeting their new team and they're working through this, this kind of framework that help them connect and understand their roles and responsibilities and their strengths and weaknesses within a team. They're physically doing that inside of the lab, but then maybe that session's over or that's their in lab day, but they need to continue virtually. They can take that work with them and continue to leverage some other online collaboration platforms that we've say use that same canvas, but in there and using virtual sticky notes and able to do that same work in a, in a hybrid uh, space as well. So making all of those tools accessible in a physical analog component as well as in a virtual space was really important to us, mm -hmm. uh, especially coming out of the, the pandemic. As we all learned, we had to pivot to 100% virtual and then we built everything virtual and then we had to pivot to get it all out in a physical. Right. And then now the happy medium is that balance between the two, knowing that we have people plugging into the content uh, from all over the place. Very cool. Yeah. Very innovative. Yeah, there you yes. go. Social innovation, Social right? Social exactly. innovation. And the students, they'd be coming from coming together to work on these projects, from, but from all different areas of study? Uh, quite often, so it's done in a group. Uh, the, a lot of the Change the Now program is done in a group setting, so between you know three to six people. Um, and yeah, so they would primarily all be part of a same program or discipline, like uh, information tech students or like a, like a vet tech or something like that, or we get a lot of social service worker students mm. or ECE, which is early child care education. I have to remember all these. You acronyms. nailed another acronym. Yes. Yeah, we uh, should keep a tally exactly. going. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so what all these different. So normally the teams are uh, of of the same discipline, and okay. they're and the 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 problem that they're working on is related to and taps into some from their lens. So they're bringing their unique perspective of the lens and the program and their passion that they are participating in Georgian with into that actual. Uh, so you're program. able to add into any department really an experiential learning component. Exactly. That's also rooted in social good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no big deal. That's no big deal. <laughs> no and it's cool because you get these these really neat inverse effects where we had uh, something uh, discipline like information network security students, INSS, doing their co-op with us. So these are tech-driven, very like linear thinking group of students work 
working from a, a very tech heavy lens and then we're giving them like, okay, now do a Teams canvas and like get to know each other. What are your strengths and weaknesses? Now empathize, like let's do an empathy map perhaps. And then they're all of a sudden, uh, and they're working towards their, their, their solution was to create like a creative storytelling solution that could be used as a, re a learning resource, right? Now you're getting these students that would never in a million years write a script and storyboard out and act out, say, something or create a virtual engagement, uh, you know, or a, a virtual story or tool. So they're getting to, they're, but they're bringing their unique lens and, and their, all their, their talents and skills from their discipline into that. So we're getting these really cool mishmashes and cross-ups of these different things that are yielding really cool results. And that's innovation, you know, in real time, right? Yes. And what a beautiful experience <coughs> you're able to provide for these students who, we know that the deepest learning happens when you are a little bit uncomfortable and that's where the growth happens. So giving yeah. them a safe space to get uncomfortable so that they can really expand Absolutely. their learning. And I love that you mentioned the safe space. Quite often we reference the, the labs as a safe space to fail and to fail forward, right? Those are some of the, the mantras that we bake into like, so quite often we'll bring in groups or teams or something like that where they're, it's, they've never had that opportunity to have some of those diff difficult conversations or right. unpack a really complex idea, uh, knowing that you know, they have to put it back together. So we hold those spa that physical space for them to have those conversations, lay out all the stuff, you know, kind of sort through it all, and then also allow for them to pack it back up and, and reflect upon that. And so yeah, creating that, that safe space to fail and fail to fail forward. forward. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. So We've got digital literacy, we've got some art and creativity. We're also, you know, AI is a part of every conversation, yeah. especially when it comes to post-secondary and career preparation, I imagine. So how is all of that coming together for uh, the future of not only education, but innovation? Yeah. Big giant question. Yeah. How are all of these things? Being? So um, uh, this is the where I get to really lean into my strengths. So my favorite, I uh, being an artist and a designer my entire life, my favorite Venn diagram is that overlap of, this is the camera, that where it's like creativity <laughs> and uh, and. Um, and technology, they overlap, mm. and so there's this sweet spot in the middle, and it's, it's very rare that within an artist's lifetime a new tool to create or a new paintbrush is invented, right? So the, the adage of AI and VR and augmented reality are creating these opportunities for not only to learn some really cool tools, but to put tools into the hands of people who may, not, uh, may have an idea but have never felt comfortable or confident enough to actually get it out on paper. So, uh, so those are some of the cool things that come from the, um, from the advances in the technology and some of these other things. So uh, the digital literacy mm -hmm. piece, like allowing people to see this stuff is available to them, um, that they are, that it's not scary, a safe place to, to try it out and to learn. And so, a student in like an information technology program might not consider <coughs> themselves a creative. So to give them some some tools to tap into that side of their brain. Exactly, or to just say, hey, you know, you can throw a, a headset, a VR headset on, and we can go and paint this in VR right now if you want. And they're, they're oh, what? And then we can do that? <laughs> or, and then we can, you know, that thing that you painted in VR, we can put, spit that out on the 3D printer, and now you can hold that little thing in your hand. And like to them, that's like sci fi level stuff, but it's, that's a very simple workflow that you can tap into. And it's not until, you know, a lot of, like, until you show them what they can do and that they're allowed to do and get in there, get dirty and, you know, and have those experiences. So the learn by doing component is So huge. give us an example of one or two projects that are going on right now in your lab that you're really excited by. Yeah, absolutely. So actually we just finished up our uh, winter semester. So we are actually in this uh, bridge right now between summer semester, but some of the projects that came out of the last group, we had a, a group of students doing their second co-op with us. It was a group of uh, ECE students. Uh, that were mm. was early childhood education yeah. uh, and their design brief was around um, food insecurities um, and I forget the second SDG but they ultimately identified some really cool gaps about um, education around um, they wanted to tap into like that K-12 to uh, um, area where uh, uh, educating uh, students on where their food comes from and how to prepare it um, and that type of thing as well as so some of these skills like not only to yeah, understand what goes into growing something and, and, and really understanding those pieces but how to actually cook healthy nutritious meals and then some budget components in there as well so they came up with this idea of like a mini chef program so they, they were able oh. to identify like and create a menu and connect with some school boards and we brought in some people from the Simcoe Muskoka District Health Unit. Um, so those would be those community exactly partners. these are ex these are subject matter experts that come in share real-world 
information, statistics, and data, and things like that. And, and also it, have problems to solve that maybe your students can <clears throat> help. Exactly. Yeah. So they actually went through, this is their second time running through that, and they've connected with, so some of their ideas that they've come up with can actually get implemented or shown. It's kind of like a cool Dragon's Den type scenario, maybe. I don't know where right. they're pitching their ideas. They've thought through the process, and they have something. So that's a, a really neat like one that, that came out of it. Um, another cool one that just recently wrapped up um, was that the students identified, again, on their, the idea of food insecurity and the cost of living and things like that, that they identified some um, op some uh, things in their tuition that they weren't leveraging, like some like a gym membership is what, what they mm. focused on. And they, so they noticed a lot of students weren't necessarily leveraging the gym membership, but were more interested in maybe like a meal pass or a meal card. So they they basically prototyped and, and thought through this idea of like being able to opt out of one thing and opt into something else that was more beneficial and pertinent. So that's a really doable, achievable thing that they can action, right? So they've thought yeah. it all out and then they can present those ideas to the right so, people. Doable, achievable action. What yeah. would a call to action be for our viewers that aren't at a Georgian college campus, although we're all gonna want to flock there <laughs> and take your program? What should what can we all be doing to implement some of these practices? I think at the bare minimum, um, I always just express to anybody that we interact with is just being a good human. Uh, like, do, you know, yeah. uh, be good, do good. Uh, we all have, regardless of any of our background or any of that fun stuff, we are, we are all sharing this planet. And if we don't look after the planet and each other, then, you know, the rest of this stuff isn't going to matter. So just being a good human and doing good is a bare minimum. Take a glance at the SDGs if you're ever going to, you know, you may not, I don't expect you to remember them all or to identify with all of them, but take a look. You're probably already doing a lot of things, okay. and it's all those little actions that make a big difference. The turning off the light switches or picking up the, the can off the ground and making sure it goes to the recycling, it's all of those little things that make the big difference. And connecting in, in our communities with these, you know, with our colleges, with the community partners, we're not in it alone. Some of these problems can seem really big, yeah. um, but we want to thank... Adam for coming uh, from Aurelia to our studio today to join us on Empowered with Jessica Flynn. Our show is on a mission to unleash local wisdom like what's happening at Georgian and share it across the region. And we're so excited to uh, release this episode to stay up to date with what's happening at Georgian. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Empowered with Jessica Flynn.